Welcome to Massive Late Fee. And now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my wife, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? How much? It's been a good week here. It's April 2nd, 1999. Do you want to argue with me about what day it is? Happy after April Fool's Day, everybody. No, I think you won that one, so we're we're good. I win most of them, everyone. Just so you know. It must be nice to be perfect. Well, you know, I'm not perfect. I thought that I was wrong one time, but it turned out I was (laughs) not. So... Anyway, uh, speaking of perfection, do you want to squash the Y2K bug, Carol? Sure. So uh, here's four programs that you can use to do that. Check 2000 PC. There's also Intellifix 2000, Norton 2000, and McAfee Office 2000. Okay. So here, let's read a little bit about this. You've heard the predictions that the world's computers will grind to a halt on January 1st, 2000, causing everything from an economic crisis and widespread famine to a nuclear meltdown. (laughs) Most of the predictions have to do with government and corporate computers, but don't let that overshadow the potential problems faced by home computers. (laughs) Yeah, that's that should be your top priority. Everyone's worried about nuclear meltdown it's like yeah but my my i can't play snake <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is definitely my concern uh let's see the same computer that cranks out term papers and visits the newest oddball site on the internet may well host a home business or family checkbook it is those sorts of time sensitive functions spreadsheets and data management where pcs are most vulnerable to what we have come to know as the y2k bug This subject has been written about before, but it's worth revisiting. Early computers had memories that were... Yeah, we get it. We get it. We understand that there was a memory problem, so they they shortened four digits for a year to two digits for a year. We understand. (laughs) Wait, that's why? Yeah. To save memory? Yeah. That's crazy. Well, they used to... The memory on the computers used to be really small. As a result, software companies have scrambled to develop scores of programs to fix or help you fix your computer's Y2K problems. I don't know. I just don't feel like this is that big of an issue to me. Check, check, okay, so check 2000 PC. It does an exceptional job of checking the Y2K issues in your computer. It's speedy and passes along the information in a simple-to-understand chart that provides the addresses of websites where you can download the appropriate fixes. So it's basically like, here, buy this shit. Yeah, it's stupid. Don't do it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. I agree. Just throw out your computer anyway and just get a new one. Wait till after 2000. Yeah, once 2000 hits, just throw your computer out and get a new one. It's garbage now anyway. (laughs) That's what I say. It'll just be used as a uh, paperweight. Exactly. So, Carol, speaking of paperweights, do you want to talk about the newsmakers? What, What newsmakers? Well... So Bill Maher says a 2000 run would be incorrect, you know, politically incorrect with Bill Maher. It's a show I watch sometimes. Bill Maher for president? Not (laughs) very likely, says the host of Politically Incorrect. Quote, I wouldn't want to be a politician because they aren't allowed to change their mind. Maher says in the current edition of Rolling Stone, if they do, they're accused of being inconsistent. There's no such thing in politics as evolving and learning. If you did... Why then you'd be a flip flopper? <laughs> Gosh, okay. interesting. I, I think he wouldn't want to be a politician for a lot more reasons than that. I don't think he'd be a good politician. Agreed. In, and in my opinion, I, he does an entertaining show from mm-hmm. time to time, but yeah, not not a politician. I don't think he could handle the responsibility. Why do we always want celebrities to be politicians anyway? I don't it's the know. Stupidest thing in the world. Yeah, like I mean, I guess maybe the familiarity, but mm. yeah. Uh, Teamsters block Baywatch shift. Good day, Baywatch. The long-running syndicated television show is heading to Australia after a Teamster official rejected a contract proposal to bring production to Hawaii from California. The show's creator said. Baywatch uh, is going to to Australia 
to find all that Australian talent down there. Is this like for a special or like forever? I don't know. Probably forever. Hmm. Greg, I don't watch Baywatch, so I don't know. Greg Bonin said Teamster local 399 director Leo T. Reed would not agree to an 11% salary cut for Hawaii's movie and television industry drivers. That would have reduced minimum wage salaries from 1840 a week to 1641 The new show likely will be called Baywatch Down Under. <laughs> My God. Do you remember that episode of Friends with uh, Joey and Chandler watching Baywatch? And yes, like, yes, yes. The beauty of the show is the running in slow motion. Always mm-hmm. keep them running. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have literally never seen an episode of Baywatch. I'm obviously aware of it as a cultural phenomenon thing. We all know who Pamela Anderson mm-hmm. is. We all heard about the sex tape. We, we, we all know that stuff. Yeah. So, but I don't... Um, yeah, I don't I don't follow it. So No, I mean I've seen an episode or two, honestly, and it's it's not great. I, I mean I can't imagine it is. Yeah. There's usually some kind of like issue that they have to sort through, but it's mostly just, you know, people in bathing suits being attractive. Brittany tells kids to find their niche or niche. Uh teen singing sensation Brittany Spears says she's happy being a role model. Quote, you want to be a good example for kids out there and do do not do something stupid. Spears. How old is she? Uh, 17. Yeah, exactly. Spears. She was a fucking kid. What the hell? Spears says in the current edition of Rolling Stone, the 17-year-old whose debut album, Baby One More Time, is flying off the racks, believes the key to success for kids is finding a niche. niche. If, <laughs> if they find something that keeps them happy, writing, drawing, anything like that, then they'll have confidence. Okay. That sounds like a very scripted answer. It sounds like a beauty pageant answer. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it sounds, it's very, very safe. Mm-hmm. And Brittany, so what do we think of Brittany Spears? I don't know. I mean, I like her music. It's fine. I had to, I had to have someone explain to me what hit me baby one more time means. I was like, why is she advocating someone <laughs> slap her around? Oh my God. But it was like, no, it's it's it's, it's kid slang. It's tell me something, you know. Hit me up. That's what it means? Yeah. I thought it was like, fuck me one more time. Whoa! <laughs> oh my God, really? Yeah. Wow, no. You always, why, <laughs> like, every song you always have sex on the brain. Because that's my brain. That's she, how like, it works. She hears Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, and she's like, there's <laughs> a lot of woman coming, right? She's saying, ah. Oh, my God, stop. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> real quick before we get to the, the film that we watched today, I have one more quick story. I just thought this was interesting. We have the hot videos, the best sales and renting videos. The renting videos are what you would kind of expect. The Water Boy, Mighty Joe Young, What Dreams May Come. So there's something about Mary. Pleasantville, Snake Eyes Ever After, Soldier, Ronan, and Bride of Chucky. Bride of Chucky, there you go. That's a good Friday night for you. The te- the top selling uh, ones, though. Mighty Joe Young's on, on there. Then... There are two in the top ten. I want. I there are two in the top ten of se- selling. I want to see if you if you catch this and if you have any are, ideas. Are, are one of them a Disney movie? No. Aw. <laughs> Mighty Joe Young, Tybo Workout, Ever After, One Hundred and One Dalmatians, Mulan, Ants, The Rescuers, Austin Powers, Crunch, Tybo Workout, The Temptations movie. What? what? This Tybo shit, what is like? What is going on with this? So you just read off a list of 10, mm-hmm. and I'm supposed to pick the top two? No, I'm oh. saying there, there are two <laughs> Tybo videos in the top oh. 10, and I'm saying, what up with that? <laughs> um, by the way, The Rescuers is a Disney movie. Billy, there's a lot of Disney movies on there. But that's... I asked, and you said no. I... <laughs> What I was saying is there are two I want to talk about oh. that are in the top ten of sales. <laughs> and you asked if, like, if one of them was a Disney, and I said no. I thought it was like trivia, like who, who are the top oh, two my. movies. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is just this week, but like this Billy Blank's Tybo shit. Okay, what is Tybo, this? sorry. Go ahead. What is it? I don't know. Some kind of martial arts. Taekwondo. 
<laughs> workout. That's, I don't know what it is, yeah. but it's like it's this new workout thing, and I think it's weird. It is weird. It's all weird. You're weird. I'm Spe- weird. Speaking of weird, Carol. Yes, dear. We watched a movie called The Matrix. The Matrix, yes. Uh, real quick before we get to our thoughts about it. Okay. I thought it would be fun to read uh, the review by John Monahan in the our very own Detroit Free Press. Okay. He gives The Matrix one star. Are you fucking kidding me? What is wrong with him? A computer crash nightmare with Keanu Reeves as a kind of hacker Christ sent to redeem the real world from cyber men in black who have reprogrammed it as a computer game in which everyone wears black and speaks in epigrams. What? Anyone convinced technology is our undoing can use this effects-laden brain-dead bore as evidence. Oh! Rated PG-13 for violence. Are you fucking kidding? Like, he doesn't even understand the movie. Well, so, to me, it comes across as old man, like, yells at cloud. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't... I I agree. I don't think he got. I don't think he understood the movie at all. Like he he said that it was reprogrammed. Like like everybody wears black and shit. But that that was that that was the real world. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, Roger Ebert gave it three out of four stars. I mean, I guess a, everybody a who was aware of the real world in the Matrix was wearing black. That's one of the things I want to talk about. There are many things I want to talk about with this movie. So, the style, the aesthetic, the feel of the movie, uh, the cinematography, the effects. There are a lot of things to talk about with this film. Uh, I will be the first to admit that I made fun of this movie before we saw it. What's the Matrix? Who gives a fuck? (laughs) Where's Sophie? Same thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Keanu Reeves. Career over. What? Dumb. No. Not a good actor. I don't agree. No, I'm just saying that's what I that's what the things I was saying before this movie. Okay. Uh he's still not a great actor. He's still he's not great in this movie. Like, he's not this isn't a career defining performance. This is a this is a pair of directors who understand exactly who Keanu Reeves is, exactly how to use him. And he may have found his own Britney Spears niche or niche <laughs> uh, in this because he's wooden as an actor. I, he seems like a very nice guy. I don't mean to like pile on him or whatever, but he seems he's wooden as an actor. He doesn't. He's not a great. He's not a Jack Nicholson. He's not a great actor, but in this movie, he's kind of like a. An avatar. He's a place. He's a placeholder for us. Okay. So yeah. As a point of view character, and as that, his acting style works really well. Big bold choices in this role. I don't. I think the movie doesn't work. Okay. If you make big bold acting choices in this, then I think it ruins the aesthetic of the movie. I can see that. I think his, the way he acts, is perfect for this. The whole like whoa. <laughs> what's going on there is no spoon like you know like <laughs> i know kung fu like that when he when he gets out of the computer and he's like i know kung fu it's like <laughs> that's not a good line delivery but it totally works in this movie well yeah and i mean i think he's supposed to be kind of shell-shocked the whole time so his like i think that's part of lack of uh emotion works yeah that's what i'm saying i think i think it works it 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 doesn't in a lot of movies. I don't think it worked incredibly well in Speed or anything like that, but it works in this. And I feel like this may be part of a career renaissance or renaissance. Uh, renaissance. Anyway, what did you think of The Matrix, Carol? I loved it. I, I thought it was fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a super fun movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked the action. I don't know. And, and it, it speaks, I think, to everybody's fears about, like, AI and what you know the world's gonna turn into. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I I enjoyed it a lot. What did you think? So, I think this is probably the best movie of the year. This may be the best movie since we started the show. 
Wow. Like, this is this movie is fantastic. We saw... So this movie is written and directed by the Wachowskis. Uh, we saw their movie Bound. Remember when we watched that Gina Gershon and Jennifer Tilly lesbian movie? They get naked and have sex. You don't remember Gina Gershon? No, I remember them getting naked and having sex. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, I That's, remembered. That chokes her up, everybody. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I remember nothing else about that movie, but I do remember that. So I liked that movie. I didn't think it was fantastic, but I liked that movie. What was interesting about that movie was the innovation of camera movements. Every shot is interesting in that movie. And they, the Wachowskis bring that to this, too. To me, maybe the biggest triumph of the movie is that... The obviously, if you haven't seen the movie, go see the movie. There's going to be spoilers all over the place, and this oh, is a movie that can easily be spoiled. So, go see it if you haven't seen it. But the the conceit of the movie is that there was a war. AI took over, kind of like the Terminator, and uh, we had a war. Human beings and the machines had a war, and the machines have now enslaved the human population. To use them as batteries, which I'll get to, which is <laughs> dumb as hell. That part and I it. have a feeling that there was something else that makes a lot more sense, but we'll get to it in a minute. Hmm. Um, but they've enslaved them to use them as batteries. And in order to keep them alive, they've created a fantasy simulated world of the of the of Earth at the peak of human civilization, <laughs> which is right now. Yeah, which is hilarious. <laughs> um. But anyway, so the, like, that's that's the conceit of it, and people have been let out, and their Neo, which is Keanu Reeves' character, is the the newest one to be let out. Because of all that, as written, the movie is terribly paced. As written on okay. the, on the page, because and it has to be by definition. You're dealing with a lot of. You're dealing with a lot of information that you have to get across to an audience. So the entire front end of the movie is front loaded with tons of exposition. And then the back end of the movie is the actual plot and all the action that happens. So as written, the movie at the beginning is very boring. It's people talking in rooms and then... Then you get to the action stuff, right? Yeah. There's a little bit of action at the beginning, bunch of boring people talking in room stuff, action at the end. <laughs> the brilliance of this movie, and I think the best thing that they did, is they made every single one of those exposition scenes interesting. Mm-hmm. That the movie doesn't have a pacing problem. As written, it, it should, but it never feels like that. It never feels like a slog. Yeah. Because... They brilliantly have the this computer program that's like a cha- training program so they can bring stuff into there uh, and they use that dy- dynamically. The camera is almost always moving, doing something interesting, showing interesting shots. There's a lot of dynamism going on in the actual movie making that makes all these simple dialogue scenes where we got to get this information out to the audience interesting and engaging and like it it you know it connects you to the movie yeah and to me uh, despite all the other stuff that we're going to talk about and all the other praise that i'm sure will both of us because it seems like you liked a lot too will heap on the movie that to me is the biggest uh the biggest win for the wachowskis in this movie is that they were able to make all of that interesting yes yeah they did a fantastic job you know what I was thinking about, though? <clears throat> like, when they woke up, like, the very first person, can you imagine being the very first person with nobody oh, to explain anything to you? Like, exactly. That would be horrifying. Yeah, how did any of, like, <laughs> I, I, I feel like this movie is almost built for a sequel. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they're going to do a sequel or not. Oh, but they definitely set it up for one, for sure. But, yeah, they definitely set it up for a sequel. Um, I would be interested to know a little more about the beginnings of this revolution. The mm-hmm. first, like they, they briefly mentioned the first person to come, to come out of this. They did. I didn't remember that. Yeah. And that, uh, he started to say like, it's very much as the bad reviewer, uh, said, it's very much a Christ allegory. 
At, at, at one point, uh, Keanu Reeves at the beginning of the movie is giving, is selling something. It looks like a computer program. I don't know if like, it's one of those things where, what was that hackers or what was the movie um, where it's like computer program as drug? I can't remember. I think Keanu, Keanu Reeves might've been in it too. I don't remember. I think it was hackers, but there was like, they were using a computer program as like a drug. It almost seems like that. Like he's selling them something illicit or whatever, Yeah. but it's a computer program. And the guy goes, thanks, but you're my own personal Jesus Christ. And it's like, okay, like that didn't seem so heavy handed at the time, but (laughs) after seeing where the movie went, it's like, okay, I get it. (laughs) I get it. He's, he is a, a Christ allegory, obviously. Um, but they talk about the first guy that came out of the Matrix, Morpheus does, the god of dreams. That's <laughs> also funny. Love it. And he he says that there's a, a prophecy from the Oracle that he'll come again, basically. The first guy that, that you know, like he'll come again. And, and they're, so they're looking for the one, and they think it's Neo. Neo, an anagram of one. So the first, the first one to break out is supposed to be like reincarnated into somebody else. I guess I'm not sure. I I would be interested in learning more about that too. Like I said, I would love the backstory. Who who was the first person to get broken out? Did did who built the the machines, the mm-hmm. stuff, the the hovercraft stuff that they use and everything? Yeah, like, they have a whole like process to break them out of their little mm-hmm. like incubator thing. Yeah, and I I doubt the machines made that. No. So that that will be interesting too. A lot of people there's there is a lot of backstory that's touched upon but not really delved into. The fact that a lot of people are born into the matrix now. Mm-hmm. And they're just like they're they're incubated and farmed and stuff like that. How does that happen? And Keanu Reeves was one of them. How does that happen? They just come like in vitro basically. They combine the stuff they need to, they grow it in the little pod. And then cuz when he opens his eyes he's like why do my eyes hurt? And they're like cuz you've never used them. Right, but I'm just like, okay, people are in their minds having sex, but they're not having sex with their bodies. Right. So, and like, I I mean, they're all like asleep, basically. Maybe pregnancies don't occur. Maybe it's one of those things that's like people don't even think about, but pregnancies don't even occur. Or maybe the, the computer randomizes it randomizes it yeah just like ran like whatever like they have sex and it's like okay you got pregnant this time and then they create a baby and put it in the matrix with them i i guess don't know i it's it, it's what that's another one of those weird things so i i feel like if you think really really deep about this movie <laughs> you may be able to pull some strings well, I, don't, sure. I don't know that it's although it's a lot more tightly knit of a narrative than many other movies we've seen the one thing, my one complaint, I only have one, is the battery thing. Yeah. So human beings, they, you know, the, the conceit is that uh, people, they released nuclear weapons or something like that, so they scorched the sky out so that the, the sun can't shine through, which, by the way, would kill all of the people, too. Yeah. Um, but so because they were solar-powered machines. So in response, what the machines did was enslave humanity and turn them into batteries. The amount of energy that it would take to create a simulation for everyone in the world to keep us all, all of our biological you know, stuff alive and everything, all the energy that it would take to do that stuff would be way more energy than a hum, one human body could could produce mm-hmm. it's just not it's just we would make terrible batteries it, human beings use up fuel that's why we need to eat and stuff like yeah. that like it's it doesn't it makes no sense i think because this script is so brilliant and maybe i'm giving them too much credit but i think the wachowski said yeah so um so they enslave humanity because they need for whatever reason they need this this uh, matrix thing, right? Um, or maybe it's just like uh, a way to keep us asleep or whatever. Who knows? But I, I have a feeling that their thought was, yeah, they need computing power. So they use our brains all connected together to boost their computing power like an internet. And the and the the studio heads were like, that doesn't, no one's going to understand that. That doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Because they don't know what the internet is. They they were born in 1940 or whatever. Right, right, right. And they're like, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Make them batteries. That makes <laughs> that makes more sense. And we can show a battery. We can get a Duracell uh, 
sure. par- partnership or something. Like, I think that's what happened. And so they reworked their script to, to, to do that. But that, to me, that's the only thing that, that blatantly, and it's, it didn't take me out of the movie, but it was close because it's such a fundamental part of the plot. Mm-hmm. And it's, like I said, it's not something that I think makes any sense. Well, and the fact that they liquefy the dead ones and use them to feed the live ones. And like yeah. cannibalism is bad for people yeah. and it would cause a lot of Diseases problems. Stuff, yeah. 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 That also doesn't make any sense. Like a human body doesn't have all the nutrients we need anyway. Right. So I don't, I don't, yeah. And they, they make their own nutrient paste and stuff like that. The humans, they're eating something that looks like cream of wheat or whatever. And they're like, yeah, it's nutrient paste. It's an amino protein with all the, like, you know, all the other vitamins and minerals you need. It tastes like Yum. Sugar. Yeah. But it's like they could just use that. Yeah. If the human beings can make it, the machine should be able to make it. But the people aren't eating. The people are just like comatose. Yeah. It's, you know, it's weird. It's very weird. Why did he, why did Neo just get flushed? When, so they let him out of, they, 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 he takes the, the red pill. He goes through the mirror, whatever, touches the mirror and the mirror gets him and stuff. I think that's the, the metaphor of like, you have to go through the door. That's him going mm-hmm. through the door. Um, but then he wakes up, he wakes up in his pod. He pulls his own trach thing out. Or Ugh, yuck. That one, was awful. One of their little squid monsters comes and looks at him grabs him by the neck and then let like unscrews his thing and then he gets flushed or was that one of theirs it seems like it was one of one of one of the robots but maybe it was one of their machines yeah i'm not sure i mean it's if since it was helping him get out i would think it was one of the humans machines but maybe getting flushed is like oh he's defective because he woke up and he should have been going somewhere else i don't know my thought was they thought he was dead Hmm. they're like oh he's he's, like his body's jerking moving or whatever that means he's dead and so it's like he's dead just flush him and Hmm. then they rescued him that was kind of my thought but maybe it was maybe they reprogrammed one of those squid machines to help them or something i don't know i don't know yeah there's not there are there are a lot of things that are not explained but you know it's like a more than two hour long movie i believe so yeah, right they, about right about two hours they couldn't uh really fit that much more in right which is like i said that's why i'd be interested in a sequel i'd be i i it's rare that i say hey we should do a sequel to a movie but i'd be kind of interested to see some of the backstory stuff you can do the past you could juxtapose the past with what's going on in the present and everything um but yeah, I mean, I guess we have to talk about what they're calling bullet time too. That's the uh, the thing we see it right at the beginning too. They they only use it a couple times, but we see it right at the beginning too with Trinity uh, Carrie Ann Moss mm-hmm. when she that's another biblical reference, obviously Trinity, Holy Trinity, of course, where she jumps up in that uh, like martial arts pose. She's going to do the Daniel Larusso crane kick or whatever, mm-hmm. and. She pauses in midair, everything slows down, and the camera spins around and everything. So they call that bullet time. That was used in a music video, I guess, actually, uh, first um, one of uh, John Bon Jovi's music videos. Okay. Uh, I think like a year ago or something like that. But basically, they, they have a bunch of cameras, and they take a bunch of images all at once, and then in editing... They can use it's like still frame almost. They can use all those still frames and then you know move it so it looks like it's panning around and everything like that. And it, it makes it very interesting, unique. Like everything about this movie, the aesthetic of this movie, uh, the some of the music even it, it has its it has a very distinct, unique feel. You can you can see all the very deliberate choices in everything, and it's it's a crystal clear singular no pun intended because it's two directors but singular vision throughout Mm -hmm. the entire movie so i mean the one thing i love the aesthetic of the movie i love the wardrobe choice i i think they look badass they look like you know they shopped at hot topic where everybody's afraid to go because everybody in there's scary black Um, leather (laughs) black leather and dark sunglasses so I wonder, though, like, these are supposed to be, like, basically avatars of themselves, not really them. True, yes. So. Yeah, because uh, Keanu Reeves, obviously, he's got a bunch of holes in his body from where he was hooked up to the machine. 
and he's his hair is super short. Mm-hmm. But when they go into the Matrix, his hair is long, like it was when we first see him and everything. So yeah, it's 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 them, but it's not a hundred percent them. It's an idealized version of them. But why did they all decide that I can choose to look like anything, and I'm going to look like I'm a hot topic shopper? I don't know. I, like I said, to me, it's like so. There's there's a new kind of movement called steampunk. Okay. It's like a punk style mixed with old style. And I think this movie is is tapping into a little bit of that. There are anachronisms in this movie for sure. Uh, it's supposed to be 1999. Even the year for them they said is closer to 2199, the actual year. But in the, in the simulated world, The Matrix, it's supposed to be 1999. But all the phones are like rotary phones. <laughs> And yeah. stuff. So it's like there are there are deliberate anachronisms. I and they're not mistakes. They're they're obvious deliberate choices. Mm-hmm. But so I think that the black leather kind of thing it goes with that. So it's sure. more, more of a timeless kind of look because you could see it in the seventies. You could see it in the future. You think you could see people walking around like that in the seventies in black leather trench coats? Sure. Huh. Well, actually, that's true because I had a black leather trench coat that belonged to my mother in the seventies. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, I mean, I I loved it. I want to see another one. I want to have the questions answered. Um, I think the action scenes were amazing, like mm-hmm. when they slow down time. And I've heard complaints about the ending of the movie. Okay, that the beginning of the movie is is like heady and philosophical and interesting. And, and stuff like that, and then the end of the movie is a generic like shoot 'em up kind of thing. But I, I, I kind of disagree. Mm-hmm. I like the I like the action because I was trying to save Morpheus. I like the action at the end of the movie. Uh, I think it works as this like explosion of just every, like everything's been building up, and it's just this big like explosion. And then I like the the fight of. Neo and the agent mm-hmm. at the end. The agents like they no one's ever defeated an agent and then at the end of the movie he jumps inside of him and like bursts out and everything. That is a fucked up way to kill something. He he's re he's he dies but then is it comes back mm-hmm. to life just like Jesus. Yeah. And E. T. Which is also in Jesus allegory. It is? Yeah. Huh. He dies, he's resurrected, all that stuff. Okay. Comes from another place. Is every resurrection story a Jesus story? I don't know if everyone is, but I every resurrection story is going to be compared to Jesus for sure. Okay. And I think most of them at least have something to do with it, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I... I can't recommend it enough. I would say go see it in the theater and then go see it again in the theater. Yeah, and buy the soundtrack because the music was also amazing. I'm do 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 do. What are you that doing there? Song, you know. Okay. We're fucking yeah. coming for you or whatever. <laughs> he gets on that. I want to see that too. Like, what? Do, okay, here's a question. What do you want to see out of the sequel? Um, I want to see them fighting back. I want to see them yeah. like freeing more people. Yes. And, yes. Yeah. Yes, bringing more people out. Uh, I thought it was. I thought it was interesting too. And I want to. I w- hope that they, that they in the sequel, if they make a sequel, which I think they will, but I hope that they they touch on this a little bit more too. I love the idea of like these computer programs because the agents are supposed to be computer programs. Mm-hmm. These computer programs can take over anybody's body, and they do. But the bodies they're taking over are the people they're trying to save. So, like, as they're shooting and stuff like that and everything, because you see they kill one of, like, the police officers or whatever, and the agent face goes away and it goes back to the regular person. That's somebody in the Matrix that's now dead. Yeah. And it's like that's a potential person they could save and be like, hey, guess what? You're not actually working for some shadow organization trying to kill us. You're a human being enslaved. And it's like, I want them to touch a little more on that too. Like having to fight back. And that's, they make Neo at the end of this movie, super, super powerful Mm -hmm. at the end of the movie. He flies. Yeah. And it's like, I, I worry about because Superman has that problem of being so powerful that he can't be hurt. 
So nothing seems like it has stakes and it's not interesting anymore. Hmm. To me, that would be a way to kind of neutralize that problem is if he's got to fight against people but not kill them and try not to hurt them. So he has to hold back a lot of his power as he's fighting back because they want us. They don't want to kill a bunch of people. They want to save a bunch of people. Interesting. That yeah, that would be hard. That would be and, a good and conflict. That, yeah, that conflict would would aid the movie. I think so. I'd like to see some flashbacks to the past as and maybe as Neil learns more about the past and the fighting stuff in the future. Yeah, I I, I think it would be. I think it'd be great. But I. I thought it was fantastic. I, I don't know what the hell that reviewer was talking about. Yeah, he's on drugs. That's an out-of-touch person. That Maybe just he had does, a stroke. I don't that, know. That's a person that does not understand the movie in any way. Right. But this was fantastic. So uh, go see it. Carol, that's the episode for the week. Why don't you tell people where they can go? So you can check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Mm-hmm. You can check out the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash latefee. Or wait. <laughs> Forward slash what? Retro, Retro late late fee. Fee. <laughs> Oh my god. Holy shit. That's how I want you to put it into your computer too. Like patreon.com <laughs> forward slash late fee. what? Late retro late retro late fee dot com. Apparently I'm comes up. apparently I'm the one having strokes. Anyways, uh share the tapes with your friends. Alright, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.